So you went out and bought your first plant. You think, this is great. Nothing could possibly go wrong. Not with my plant. Well, you'll be wrong. Because spider mites happen. And they happen to all of us. But we can learn how to control them so they don't control us. What's up, plant people? It's Shane here, and today we are going to talk all about the infamous spider mite and exactly what I do to keep them at bay in my house because they're not welcome in my house. I have dealt with numerous spider mite problems, but I've never had a spider mite infestation that took over my house because I do all of these tips that I'm about to share with you prior to bringing a plant into my house and then once it gets acclimated to my house. So what is the first step in preventing spider mite infestations in your home if you just want to have house plants but you don't want to deal with all the crap? Admitting that it's possible that you could have a problem. You are not immune. No one is immune to spider mites. People all the time talk about how I've never had a bug ever. I've never seen a single bug on my house plants. I'm fine, this is fine. Wrong, none of us are immune. Some of the big name plant tubers and Instagrammers and things like that, they just don't show you the nitty gritty. None of us are immune. And spider mites, I don't wanna say they're inevitable, but at some point you will come in contact with spider mites, but you'll be able to handle it because I'm gonna tell you how. So like with anything in this world that you plan to tackle, you need to know what you're up against. So what is a spider mite? A spider mite is basically a predatory mite that lives on the foliage of our plants, indoor and outdoor, and it sucks the sap out of the plant cells. It generally lives on the undersides of the leaves and it spins um, webs of doom. Basically, these are hydrophobic webs, so just something as simple as like rain and things like that don't destroy the webs, so they can be pretty resilient. Spider mites themselves are only about, or actually they're less than a millimeter in size, so to the naked eye, it could just look like a speck of dust on your plant. And I'm here to tell you that generally, it does. Those times that you just thought that you didn't dust your plants, honey, how'd you get dust on the underside of your plants? Did you think about that? It wasn't dust. It wasn't, I promise. I know, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sorry to break it to you like this, sis. It wasn't dust. Like I said, generally they can live indoor and outdoor, um, but they do thrive in hot, dry environments. So for those of us that don't remember to refill our humidifiers, they love that. For your plants that are not in the bathroom, they love that. For those of us that have a well-draining soil mix but never seem to remember to water our plants, they love that. And any plant that is stressed out, they super love that because the plant can't fight back. Not that it really is going to naturally fight back, but any of the plant's defenses, it's basically like a weak little lamb that the spider mites are just ready to just take over. Now that we know what they are, I'm gonna tell you that the spider mites that I've personally seen in my house are usually either like a whitish translucent color or like a reddish brown color. They can be either one. I don't know the difference. If there is a difference, feel free to let me know, but those are the ones that I've personally seen in my house. Hate them both. The tricky part about spider mites is actually their life cycle. So apparently the females can lay up to 20 eggs a day and they can live for two to four weeks. So mathematically, I don't know what that equals, but that's a lot of freaking spider mite babies. And then these spider mite babies in ideal conditions can hatch in as little as three days. And then they're sexually mature in as little as five days. That's babies making babies. So basically it's an orgy going on on the underside of your leaves and you didn't even know because you just took a freaking nap basically and now you have a spider mite family living amongst all of us. So while they do call them spider mites, they are not actually spiders, but they do spin these webs that I discussed with you. And I'm also here to tell you that if you see a web on your plant, 
It has been there for a hot minute. If you can catch them in the early stages, you'll be much better off. If you're already seeing webs, little fine webs on your plant, honey, honey, it's gonna be a serious problem. So generally, if you aren't waiting all the way until you see the webs on your plants, the way that you can see that you may have a problem with spider mites is by looking at your leaves. I will insert some footage here that's going to show you what your leaves may look like. This is actually aphid damage, but it tends to look the same. So if you look closely at this leaf, you see all of those little dots on there that you might just think is leaf scarring initially. Well, it's not. It's actually from their little mouths where they bit on the leaves. And this actually has some like mm, leaf juice popping up right now, but on the back sides of the leaves, they would be biting and leaving those scars on your beautiful melanochrysum. <laughs> you may see some yellowing beginning on your leaves. You may see some little pinhole spots on your leaves that almost look like it got hit with some sort of like cleaner or a salt gun in my case, at my house. I don't know about y'all, but that's not what it is. There is something more insidious hiding underneath the leaf. Just eating away at all your little plant cells and that would be spider mites generally. Additionally, when you go to look at the underside of your leaf, you may see something that resembles sand or dust or just like almost like little white powder like Splenda. It's not Splenda and it surely ain't sweet. Those are little baby spider mites. They are just there, just lurking, ready, prepping apparently in as little as three days to hatch and to ruin your whole plant. So if you see those eggs, right then is the time that you need to act and do something. This video is actually my personal Anthurium VGI and a beginning spider mite invasion that's started to happen on some of the dying foliage. You can see some of that white powdery looking stuff and if the quality of my camera was better, you'd actually be able to see them crawling around on the leaf near my finger. It's pretty disgusting. So at this point, we have admitted that we are not immune to spider mites and we have identified our enemy. What's next? The next step that you need to be doing every single time you buy a new house plant is inspecting it at the store. If you are buying in person and not inspecting your plants at the store, you are missing a vital part of plant care that could save you a lot of drama down the road. And I'm not gonna lie to you, inspecting your plants at the store does take time and it takes dedication, but you just need one bad spider mite infestation to kind of change your mind about that. Me personally, and what I would suggest for you all is to use the flashlight on your phone. And basically, you will take whatever plant you're going to get, let's take this melanochrysum, and you're gonna to wanna to hold your flashlight up. And pretend like this is the flashlight. You're gonna to wanna to hold your flashlight and look at the leaves on the front side and on the back side with the flashlight. And here is where the very important foolproof shame method of identifying pests on your plants comes in handy. So basically, what I do to tell if there are spider mites on a plant leaf is that I take the underside of that leaf with my flashlight at an angle to see if there are any sort of like irregularities on the underside of the leaf. Then I gently blow on the leaf. I'm serious. And you wait. And basically, those little specks that you'll see underneath the leaf, if they start to move, it's a freaking spider mite. It sounds crazy and it sounds like common sense, but I'm telling you, that has changed the game for me. Of course, if you see any notable webs or anything like that on the underside of your leaf, that's kind of a given. Um, sometimes it can be a normal spider, but it's most often not. But again, I'm gonna show you. You take your flashlight, shine it at an angle on your leaf, and then just gently blow. 
and wait for movement. If those little specks start to move, put that jammy down right now and don't pick up any plants near it whatsoever. So I do that to all of my plants whenever I am checking them. Um, in the store, I also look at the soil with a flashlight for fungus gnats. I have sat down on the floor of many a garden center and examined my plants very closely because I don't want to bring bugs in this house ever again. So you'll do that once at the store, um, pretty much as quickly as you possibly can, but making sure you look at the undersides of all the leaves. And then you're also going to need to do this same thing once you get home. And then that brings us to our next step. Clean and quarantine. I know by now we all know how to quarantine. We've been doing it for God knows how many months now. But basically you need to be cleaning the leaves of all of the plants that you bring home and then isolating them from your new babies that you know don't have any issues. This is just to be extra safe because you you won't know if there's something hiding in the soil and you know those babies are getting happy and raunchy and about to sprout something up in the next three to five days so basically when i bring my plants home i will rinse the leaves underneath the sink in the tap water and then i will spray them with neem oil i am a neem oil girl tried and true i don't typically use rubbing alcohol but i just really don't have any i don't care about the smell of neem oil it doesn't bother me whatsoever I neem everything all the time. I use neem oil concentrate in my watering solution with mosquito bits, all of that. Neem oil, holla at that. And basically I'm pretty sure the neem oil will um, suffocate the spider mites. Does something, basically suffocates them and then they can't reproduce and they die. A very, probably slow, but okay with me death. Make sure you clean and then isolate your plants. If you have a small house like me, there isn't really too many places for me to isolate my plants, but as long as they're not touching your other plants, um, I will just try to keep it in a place where it's of course going to get decent light, but that it's not, a, there's no chance that a leaf could be touching or like a me walking by is gonna make a spider mite jump to another leaf, so. So you have your plants at your house, you clean them, you quarantine them, it's been about a week, what do you do now? You need to be checking your plants weekly. And I know that that sounds absolutely exhausting, but if you have plants um, like things like ivy and, and alocasia, you should probably be checking them more than weekly because I don't understand what it is with those plants, but spider mites seem to adore them. So you need to be checking the undersides of your leaves, honestly, every couple of days if you can. You can do like me and blow on your plant leaves or you can just get ahead of the game and go ahead and spray them down with neem front and back of the leaf and well water before neem after however that works um, but yeah check over your plants make sure if you do have a plant that you notice looks compromised or starts to have little dots on the leaves or is just randomly yellowing and it doesn't seem like that would be a normal thing for that plant grab that plant immediately and check it under a flashlight because there's probably something wrong. In addition to doing the weekly inspections on your plants, another way to prevent spider mites is to keep high humidity in your house. So things like humidifiers, I don't suggest spraying or misting your foliage um, that can ultimately cause fungus, which I had to learn the hard way, but um, if you have humidifiers, things like that, that can help reduce the instance of fungus. I keep wanting to say fungus gnats. That can help reduce the instance of spider mites because I guess they like the dry environment because it's harder for them to like make their webs when it's humid. I don't know. I just know that's what they like. So give high humidity because they don't like that. AKA keep your humidifiers full. My last tip to help prevent spider mites in your home. Always use protection, my friend. Basically, even if you have the perfect plant that has no signs of stress, that has no spider mites when you get it from the store, you have no spider mites in your house, you're still not immune, sis. So please, always use protection and prophylactically treat your plants for spider mites. So spray them down with neem 
make sure that they're protected before a spider mite even looks sideways at your plant because you want to get ahead of the game when it comes to spider mites. So if you ever see any dust, dirt, spots, yellowing, webs, or little specks that seem to be moving on your plants, it's probably spider mites. So treat it immediately. Get ahead of the game. We are all gonna have to deal with them at some point if we love houseplants and want to keep them in our homes. So just, just admit that you could have the problem and you'll be fine. In addition to that, there are a few plants that you should just avoid buying altogether, but I will make a separate video for that if you all are interested on the top plants that attract spider mites like nobody's business. Thank you so much to all of y'all for watching. I surely do appreciate it. If you found this video helpful, please do subscribe to my channel for more content and feel free to comment below. Tell me what other videos you would like to see. Additionally, I do have an Instagram at Frolics with Foliage where I post planty updates almost daily. On top of that, I do wanna go ahead and post somewhere on this video some of my favorite spider mite videos that currently exist from some of my favorite plant tubers that you should also follow. All right, y'all, keep on planting. I'll see you later.